it sounded like money today, you know, so they got to be able to hear that. After that, I've got a couple compressors. And so this, again, reiterate, I'm not doing a super ton on my other compressors and these neither, but I've compounded my compression a number of times throughout the mix, whether it's the vocal rider or whether it's the channel compressor or whether it's saturation or the bus compressor. And now in our mix bus, there's actually a lot of compression going on at a time, but small, small doses, right? So this one set, the ratio is set. It's only at, the ratio on this is at 1.3, right? It's 1.3 to one. That is very light, but we're just grabbing certain things. I'm using multiple compressors here. This one, fast attack, fast release. Make sure those, the crack of that snare and certain things, I just wanna make sure that they're captured and locked in focus with the rest of the song. And then the, attack, the release, quick release, I don't want one snare hit to release over like one second and the entire mix dips down and slowly comes back up after one snare. Just grab that thing and get off it. Crack, and that's it. So we're doing that and I have my mix bus compressors. I'm using a side chain filter. And what that means is that I'm filtering the signal that's causing the compressor to compress. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm rolling off some of the bottom for the side chain for what's causing the compressor to compress. You don't hear that roll off, but our super bottom, our big bass that we love, is not causing the, the compressor to over compress every time a bass hits. That lets me get my bass big and booming without making everything squash down every time the kick drum hits. Sometimes you want that. That's the secret to the Jay Dilla sound. Right, and that was from the MPC's bus compressor, and the way that it hit, it squashed everything, and that's when we got that pumping and breathing sound that, in some genres, we shy away from. In hip hop, we often embrace that, and Dilla was the master of that, and it hits, and it squashes, and you get that crunch, and you get that ride, and that breath, and that motion. That's all really cool, but that's just not what we're doing today on this mix. So I'm just filtering out that low end, so when that hits, when the bass hit to blooms, it doesn't crush everything up. And I'm following that up with a second compressor. And this is the iron from SPL. This is also coming in from Plugin Alliance. This is really a mastering compressor, but it sounds good and I got the plugin, so I'm gonna use it. And again, very little. Let's just play a bit of the track. Let's go back to the main part. Let's go back to where the drums are hitting because that's gonna illuminate for us and I don't again it's just a little bit luggage lost that free boy now we on a bad trip up and flip the entropy Neil turn antagonist hollow those red lights just flickering on a little bit just take the edge off just a taste just a taste let's see what happens when the bass comes in Hustle man, picking up the pieces of this piece of man sifting sand our glass broke so we can sift some damn so these two compressors together are maybe taking off a dB of gain. That little bit of gain reduction, but what they are doing is gluing. What they are doing is just kind of putting it all together, just gently laying everything a little bit together so it's all tight and cohesive in one space. This compressor now, the iron, much slower attack time. We've got slow attacks now. The release time is mid, you know, a faster release time on a mix uh, bus compressor for me can add clarity. You don't want it opening up too fast and you get that breath, pumping and breathing thing we're talking about, but a really long release time is gonna kind of put this compression blanket over your track. If this was like a slow ballad, maybe that might be what we want, but I need the feeling of those drums. We worked so hard to get all that sway out of that drum break and all that movement. I did a lot of shimmy shoulder work on this video for me to have a slow ass release and have everything just get laid down and my dynamics get gone. I didn't work that hard to wind up back there. And that's why you need to have your bus compressors in your mix from the beginning so I've been working with this all along. And if I felt like, well, I'm not getting everything I want out of my drums, 
Let me look at my bus compressor and check in and see what's going on. Oh, this release time is too long. It's not letting off. It's not letting my drums breathe enough. And so then I can adjust that as I go, but I already know coming in, I've got a general idea of what I'm dealing with because this is the bus compressor I use on most things. So I know where I'm at. Slow attack, medium release, but that meter is barely moving. This is game reduction, that meter there, watch. Hustle man, picking up the pieces of this piece of man, sifting sand, hourglass broke so we can sift some. And then even with that, in the mix knob, I'm using about 80% of the process signal on this. So it's not about crush it all so it can be loud on Spotify. Like I'm not really out here to try to be louder than somebody. I would just want to sound great. I want the song to feel right. Y'all can be loud, turn me up, right? That's all I need. So I'm widening the stereo image on this just to taste. You know, for y'all headphone listeners out there, you get the full width of it. If you listen on nice speakers, you get the full width. That's a thank you for y'all for listening to a, a, a hi-fi system to get that width. I'm narrowing my low end just a little bit. And that focuses it. When low end is really wide, it's not quite as punchy. When you narrow that low end, first, it's gonna feel a little bit punchier for you. Second, I knew from the jump, this album was going to vinyl. And when you're dealing with low end, when it comes to vinyl, if you've got a lot of low end on your sides, you start winding up with some real, real issues with the needle. If you've got too much low end and it's on the side, the needle can jump out of the record. You cannot press however many thousands of copies of it and then put it out there in the world and the needle is jumping off every time somebody hits Mescalito because I didn't pay attention to what happened in the low end, right? That's a big problem. So I need to be careful and just narrow my low end so it's punching and it's not causing issues when it comes to pressing the vinyl. 